in. Welcome to PT on Ice Daily Show. My name is Christina Previtt. I am lead faculty for clinical management of the fitness athlete pregnancy and postpartum. I am coming at you right now being five months postpartum myself. Our course is an eight week online course where in the actual labs of the video, you will see me pregnant, you will see me in my early postpartum period, and you will see me as I start returning to strength-based sport. Good morning, Kelsey. Um, and so um, I'm kind of trying to lead by example around some of the principles that we put into the course. And so today I want to talk a little bit about the mindset of an athlete as they go through their pregnancy and some of the things that I used in order to try and optimize or accelerate as much as possible my postpartum return. So for anybody who doesn't know about my history, um, I am a national level weightlifter. And when I was, uh, when I found out that I was pregnant with Maya, I had a meet actually four weeks later. So I had a meet when I was eight weeks pregnant and I asked our high-risk OBGYNs if it was okay for me to still compete, and they gave me the green light because my body was used to the movements of weightlifting and the position of the baby was still really far back in my pelvis. And so I was able to compete at eight weeks pregnant, which was pretty cool, um, hit a PR snatch, all that type of stuff. And then as I started to progress through my pregnancy, there were a lot of things that I took into consideration so that I could try and, you know, try and circumvent any deconditioning that was naturally going to happen because I wasn't able to push my body to the same extremes while obviously uh, being pregnant in this stage of my life. Also tempering my athlete brain that was trying to tell me that I still wanted to be this hardcore athlete even though I was pregnant and having the knowledge so that when I went into labor that I wasn't doing a workout for birth, and I'm gonna talk about that. So the first thing is that I was extremely fortunate in that I had a lot of information, which many women do not have, around pelvic floor physiology, exercise prescription, and ways to modify to reduce stresses and strains on different parts of the body. We know that especially as we get into the second trimester, and this will happen earlier for subsequent pregnancies than first pregnancies, that we're gonna have increased stress and strain on the pelvic floor. Circulating hormones in the body are going to cause ligamentous laxity, causing a bigger reliance on some of the hip musculature and low back musculature, leading to a prevalence for things like uh, pelvic girdle pain or SI joint pain, that type of thing during pregnancy. And we know that pelvic floor dysfunction is one of the biggest risk factors and vaginal birth is going to be a higher risk for pelvic floor issues than C-section. So as I got into the second trimester, I had to temper my athlete brain, but I still wanted to be able to train so that I didn't feel like I was losing myself in this period of time. And so if you are working with CrossFit athletes, especially women who are going through this phase of their life, you're going to see that they are going to want to keep pushing themselves because they are an athlete. Right now they are just a pregnant athlete, but the mindset is still there, especially if you're seeing a CrossFitter because they are so used to going at 110% lying on the ground, like gasping for air, and that is almost that's like a high. I don't know if anyone is listening to this and has done CrossFit, but that is like you're like dying together on the ground and that is a high. And when you're in pregnancy, the idea of going past 90% of your max heart rate reserve is not usually that recommended just because we don't know of any sort of fetal compromise in terms of blood flow. So still finding ways to continue to be active and get some of that stimulus is going to be really important and was really important for me. So as a weightlifter, I was still able to do variations and I've done PT on Ice podcasts around how um, different weightlifting variations and how different weightlifting drills can reduce or increase impact on the pelvic floor and the pelvis. And so I started implementing in the second trimester things like um, doing power variations instead of full variations. I started doing tempo squat work instead of full squat work because I had to start bringing the load down. 
I um, was able to work on um, appropriate breath work so that I wasn't doing Valsava or any sort of bearing down to increase pressure on a muscle that is already being strained, AKA your pelvic floor. And I was very good at listening to my body and getting checks with uh, my pelvic floor PT, which happens to be Kelsey Valentine, who does the, who's in the assistant faculty with me. And she would kind of check in to make sure that I was on the right track so I had that accountability. So the things that I would recommend is if you have an athlete that is pregnant, try and get them to check in with a physio. And if you have a pelvic floor physiotherapist that is kind of on board with some of the CrossFit stuff, get them to check in early. Um, and then try and do those triggers for regression as your body starts to get bigger, especially as you get into the end of your second trimester, into your third trimester where fetal growth is one of the biggest uh, things that is happening during that time, which means that your anthropometric, or sorry, your anthropometrics, your, uh, your body composition is going to be changing a lot and you're going to be getting more and more weight coming anteriorly. That anterior pelvic tilt is going to be more and more exaggerated as you get closer and closer to your delivery date. And then the other thing is that oftentimes the perception of athletes that are pregnant, especially CrossFit athletes, is look how hardcore they are. Like they are whatever weeks pregnant, they're still getting after it, that is awesome. And I think there's some benefits to that thought process because before it used to be when you were pregnant, you stopped doing any sort of exercise and we now know that that is 100% not true. But the harm of that can be that, you know, when we're under a ton of fatigue and we're barbell cycling, we're going to start doing Valsalva. If we're pushing our body too much, then the rebound fatigue, especially because there's a lot happening in your body during pregnancy, can be quite high. Or you can ignore your body's trigger for regression or trigger for scaling, and then you're not setting yourself up for postpartum recovery. So one of the biggest conversations that I used to have with myself and I have with my athletes is that these scale like we can still provide an appropriate stimulus for you to maintain your strength relatively well it is going to dip no matter what but we also want to think that we are making modifications to set you up for a good postpartum recovery so trying to minimize the amount of doming and coning for example because diastasis recti is very normal during pregnancy but not exacerbating the amount of stress and strain on a, a, a spot in your body that's already experiencing a lot of stress and strain is going to be important. Trying to you know, make sure that you're breathing through and learning how to not only contract, but also for CrossFitters to relax your pelvic floor, which oftentimes for people is just sitting in the bottom of the deep squat thinking about relaxing the under your undercarriage, like relaxing that pelvic floor and allowing it to relax. You think that as you go through your pregnancy that your pelvic floor needs to get stronger, 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 but CrossFitters, powerlifters, weightlifters have a very strong pelvic floor because there's that instantaneous change in loading and strain that happens when we're underneath a heavy barbell that our body has adapted by hypertrophy by tone, just like any other muscle in our pelvic floor in order to counteract that force down, especially when we're doing a Valsalva. So we have this huge transient increase in blood pressure. Our body has learned to cope with that. It has gotten stronger. And so our pregnant uh, postpartum athletes are going to have to learn to, or our pregnant and postpartum athletes are gonna have to learn how to relax their pelvic floor just as much as they have to learn to strengthen it. And so the last thing that really prepared me as I went into labor and delivery was understanding what happens in labor and delivery. The other, you know, sentiment that goes around with a lot of women who are pregnant and they're crossfitting is I'm trying to be as strong as possible for birth. I'm trying to be, you know, as fit as I can to do the biggest workout of my life, which is labor and delivery. And I'm not saying that labor and delivery is not a big deal that it's not a big workout but what can happen is that people think that their pelvic floor needs to be strong in order to go through labor and delivery but that is absolutely not true and what has happened anecdotally and I would love somebody to do research on this is that I have seen quite a few crossfitters who have had failure to progress and have ended up with a c-section 
because of hypertonicity in the pelvic floor and an inability for those muscles to relax. And so I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this because I've been percolating with this idea around how we need to teach especially this group of women how to relax their pelvic floor. So when I was going into labor and delivery, I one knew that the active muscle that is allowing the baby to progress through the birth canal is my uterus. It is active smooth muscle, it is contracting, the top segment is contracting to press down and allow the baby to continue to progress into the birth canal, which means that my pelvic floor needs to relax in order for the baby to travel through. It is already difficult to relax your pelvic floor when something is actively stretching it out, um, but it's even harder for the CrossFit athlete who has so much more muscle tone to allow that muscle to relax when you are thinking that you are straining and bearing down because for CrossFitters who are under heavy barbells, bearing down also means making sure that there's no leakage happening which is the exact opposite of what is happening during labor. So if we aren't able to relax our pelvic floor to allow the baby to descend, the baby can have a failure to progress, which would require more like instrumental delivery or some sort of um, pathology happening. Okay, so, sorry, my dog decided to come in. So for our pregnant crossfitters, we need to start teaching them that it's important to be able to relax our pelvic floor just as much as contract it. And when we're going into labor and delivery, we're thinking that it's our upper segment that is pressing down and trying to exhale as we push, not Valsalva, which again is very, very common and normal for our CrossFit athletes to be thinking that that is what they're doing. Um, but it just goes into that loop of theirs where they're like, I'm Valsalva-ing, I'm tightening everything up because I have a heavy bar on my back or I'm trying to pick a heavy bar up off the floor and I need to maintain pressure and I need to avoid that leakage. So things to be considering if we can start training our CrossFitters or at least talking to them about the fact that you know, you're in a unique situation where you have a ton of strength in your pelvic floor, you are very, very capable of maintaining pressure. And so now we need to learn how to do the opposite. Allow that baby to descend into the birth canal, allow that pelvic floor to relax and allow you to you know, have that successful labor and delivery. And so for me, that was really important where I was taking the modifications in my exercise program, but I was also coupling that with a lot of relaxation strategies that were extremely important for me in order to have a successful labor and delivery. And when I was actually in active labor, I was going against what the nurse was saying because the nurse was trying to get me to just bear down as quickly as I could for as long as I could. And I was being very, very conscientious of more relaxation techniques than active pushing techniques. So I hope you guys found that helpful. When you are working with the pregnant athlete, if we can bring it down to kind of three things. One is we need to address mindset where we are not training for birth, that we are trying to mitigate any deconditioning to optimize postpartum performance. If we are talking to pregnant athletes, bringing it down to the level of performance will often get you a bigger buy-in because for me, if I knew that if I was trying to keep snatching, but I was going into this big, like, almost like a kettlebell swing with a barbell, that was not going to help me perform well when the baby was born. And three, we have to recognize that this is a group of individuals with a lot of hypertonicity very commonly, that that can also be causing their incontinence or symptoms. And so if we know that a woman is pregnant that is crossfitting, we need to try and help teach them that relaxation so that when they go into labor and delivery, they are aware that their uterus is their active contraction. You're still trying to facilitate that with your abdominals, but your pelvic floor needs to relax in order for the baby to progress through the birth canal so that um, women are happy with their labor and delivery story. All right, I hope you guys found that helpful. If you guys are interested in learning more about this topic, um, in January, we are starting our next cohort of clinical management of the fitness athlete pregnancy and postpartum. You can jump onto that cohort, talk all things pregnancy, postpartum. You can see my pregnant self um, in some of the videos. And I hope you guys have an awesome Friday and we will see you in a couple of weeks.
Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.